five bow staff lesson for beginners. We're going behind the back. We're gonna go back there pretty soon. So start with your warm up here. Just going from one side to the other one. You're actually gonna use this motion when you go behind the back, when you transfer to do the back pass. But this is a warm up motion. This is your right hand. Just keep your hand closed. Let the weight of the staff, as you start to increase your speed, let it twist your hand even more, increasing your flexibility. You're also gonna get stronger in your forearm. Your grip strength will really improve right here for about 30 seconds on the right and then put it into the left. Hello, we're going behind the back in this video. We're gonna go back behind the back pretty quickly. Warm up. It's a very simple move, it's a basic move. It's one of the most requested though. So I wanna get right into it. You're just doing this warm up move, strengthen the wrists, the tendons, get stronger, faster, and then go from hand to hand. This is just a pass or a transfer. Pass it from one hand to the other, and that's gonna allow you to twist more as you go out, giving you stronger wrists, harder strikes, faster. Hello, it's good to see you again. Going side to side, and then take it in the right hand, and I want you to do a figure eight to the side of your body. Now the figure eight motion is just this. It's a sideways figure eight or an infinity sign. If I stand sideways to you, you can see I go to the front and then the back right here. You can also do it here in front of your body. This is that forward figure eight spin. But I wanna start right here because in a minute, you're going behind your back. I'm gonna get right into that in this workout today. Back pass and overhead pass. We're also gonna do uh, finger rolls, wrist rolls, salam, thank, thank you. So you're going forward, back, forward, back, and then put it in the other hand, the left hand, make that same motion. You're just carving down with your thumb, making a small circle in the front and then a circle in the back. To the front of the body, to the back. You can make it a little bit bigger, that sometimes helps. Pull your stomach up and in, keep your abs tight. Let me show you again from the side, front of the body, behind the body. Front, back. Now put it back in that right hand and reverse the spin. So you started here. Sometimes you have to do this and then do this to remind yourself that this is one, this is forward, but then this is reverse. And if you don't do it like that, you trick yourself sometimes. You think you're going back, but then you're still doing the same thing. I'm, everything about this, this video today is all about fluidity. We're working on bow flow. I like to call it bow flow. Flow arts, uh, another term, the old school term that I learned was freestyle. But it's the same thing. Once you learn the basics, then you want to start to weave them together, get as fluid as you can, which is what you're talking about. Improve your fluidity, and then you feel like, you know what you're doing, you feel like a stronger fighter. You also feel like you can do some pretty cool stuff. All right, so this is forward, reverse it. I forgot I was going reverse. We're going reverse, 30 seconds on the right hand. Just pulling, we slow it down just a little bit again. And then in the left hand, pulling. You're pulling with the pinky side or the small side of your hand, pulling in, pulling out front and back once you get it gradually speed up the key to speed on these uh, staffs and the key to fluidity being fluid is get the stomach tight pulling we're working behind the back today Vic over the head and behind the back simple stuff but we're going for flow we want to really flow today pulling pulling and 30 seconds here now in your right hand you're gonna go behind your back and you're gonna see that that's gonna just turn it straight up. Your left hand, this is my right hand, your left hand is gonna come under the right hand, palm facing away from you, thumb facing up, and you simply pull it out, that's it. A lot of build up for just a simple move. But once you get it, you can uh, modify it. You can make it harder for yourself. Good, congratulations, I hope you already got it. From here, meaning that if they're shipping it to you, I hope it already came, but if you went and you picked it up, that's pretty cool too. So it goes behind your back, 
hello, it's good to see you. And you pull it out like that. Behind your back, grab it and pull it out. Now, like we warmed up, we warmed up here, right? Side to side. And this makes you really good at the pass from one hand passing into the other hand. You're gonna do the same thing behind your back. You're just gonna pull it out and go back. From here to here. So you're from the side, from here to here. And this is where a lot of times you'll whack yourself in your calves or in the back of your head if there's a lot of extra um, movement in your staff while it's spinning. That's just because your wrist is not strong enough yet. It'll become stronger with time. Be patient with yourself and go slower at first. That'll get rid of a lot of the whacking yourself in the back of the head and the legs. Yeah, it's, and it's also, if you'll see what I'm doing, I'm reaching my hand. This is, this is right behind my back. I'm reaching out a little bit. If I'm right behind my back, and especially, I don't know, um, I got these big, chunky, gigantic calves. I've got like uh, mountain climbing calves. It's a family trait coming from the hill, hill people. I got hill people calves, right? I'm not kidding, they're like this. They're like uh, Popeye calves. And so I'm hitting my calves all the time. So I've learned, and you'll learn, when you go behind your back, you kind of reach it out a little bit as you bring it out. But give yourself time to figure that out. Go behind your back, 30 seconds, hand to hand. When you drop it, I was gonna say if you drop it, but I'm gonna drop it over and over. So when you drop it, pick it up. Go behind your back and then bring your hand, and I'm gonna squat straight up over your head. To go behind your back and over your head, the hand that comes out just goes straight up and continues to turn. Then you take it the same way we started. Over your head is the same as in front of your body, just like that. I'm gonna adjust the camera, hold on, we're going up. I dropped it too much today. I thought that would be helpful. All right, so from here, behind your back, as it's, as it's spinning, just come straight up. That's all you're doing. Straighten the elbow, behind your back, up, grab it, and then back down. Behind your back, you've done, it's the same thing you just did. Over your head, see I dropped it again. Over your head was your warm up move, like this. Same exact motion over your head. When it comes all the way out, then you just continue the arc behind your back, grab it up, over. Yes, excellent question. Let's talk about stripes, strikes real quick. Zane, you get behind your staff, you point your thumb at the threat, and then you just stick that in straight through any target you can hit that you can destroy. If it's the middle of his body, put it, <laughs> knock his wind out, hit him in the eyes, take away his vision, smash his teeth down his throat, from here, straight in. And then if you want to, like a pull cue, you can get extra distance, and then look. <laughs> Knockout, in the fight, for self-defense. Defend yourself, every strike in self-defense. Did you see that? Every strike like that, full commitment. Yeah, it is the best weapon for self-defense. All right, I know, <laughs> cracking myself up here. I just broke the holder of the thing. Let's see if I can get it back on without too much. I just got this one too, because I break them all the time. And now you know why. And uh, this morning, I've been working on this new workout, right? It's all about how to defend yourself in a fight with no weapons. So it's all about that hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat. And so I do these exercises that build your power and your speed and your strength. 
Let me get another camera holder. I got another one over here. Anyway, my point is this. It's a lot of stuff with this guy right here. That uh, heavy bag. You pick that up and you start throwing that thing around and around. And I'm going to show you that. And that builds some power. And I'm talking like knockout power. Because like I said, that's how I broke the thing, right? I was trying to explain that when you go to defend yourself, you got to go all in. It's got to be full commitment on your strike. No more, you know, light taps, no more slow motion or slow moves. You know, got everything twisted there. Not a little bit better. But we'll fix that later. I appreciate your patience. I hope I'm not making anybody too nauseous. Just close your eyes until I get it set up there. Yeah, I just got that new one in. All right. It's a little crooked, right? All right, that's close enough. Anyway, um, but it wears me out. And what it does, and this is really important, if you ever wanted to lose weight fast, you have to do exercises that use your brain, right? This is a great example. Complex exercises like this, behind your back, over your head. You gotta get everything else out of the way. Behind your back, over your head. See if I can squat even more. And that kid now it's hitting the ground. And those complex exercises make you burn the blood sugar in your body. And that, because your brain burns more sugar than your body does. Then you start picking up heavy weights and throwing them around explosively, not like lifting in a gym. Because when you throw that punch, you want to hit all that power, every punch, every kick comes off the floor. So you want to build not just the leg power, but your core strength, your back, your chest, your stomach, your abs, your intercostals, your obliques, all of that. And so when you start doing that workout, it really, that is why I'm dropping my staff so much. It's not an excuse, but I, I know my body because I've been doing this for 40 years, right? When you start to really push yourself, then you drop it. But that's okay because if I'm fighting, if I'm fighting with the staff to defend myself, or I'm hand to hand, I lost my weapon and they're trying to get my kids or they're trying, we gotta get out of there fast or whatever. I'm gonna be tired, you're gonna be tired, you're gonna be worn out, you're gonna be fatigued in your brain, you're gonna have fog of war, you're gonna be, uh, you put, your eyes will be burning if you can see it all, everything's blurry, you're gonna be sucking down your own blood from your mouth. All that happens and you gotta keep fighting, you gotta keep fighting. So I like to train when I depleted myself from the earlier workout, I, do the, I have this uh, Airdyne bike I do uh, the intervals on that, fast, low, fast, low, fast, slow. And then I start swinging 120 pound kettlebells 100 times. And then I start picking the thing up and throwing it. Also, I can stay strong. I wanna be able to destroy anything that threatens my family or myself, right? You gotta learn how to stand for something, yourself. Stand for yourself first. It's not a political statement. Learn how to stand for something or you fall for anything. That means, Learn how to feed yourself right, drink uh, clean water, get some good exercise, learn how to speak up for yourself, ask for what you want in life so you're not full of regret and resentment and anger all the time. Take care of yourself first, invest in yourself, and then you've invested yourself, that's what you're standing for. All right, back to the spin. We've gone behind the back. You just bring it up, take it over your head, do that for 30 seconds and then reverse it. Go the other way for 30 seconds. That's how you're gonna get your flow down. Then let's go into the spin to the sides of the body, this forward figure eight, but I want you to immediately start to put it in the other hand and then go back to the other hand and start to work on this pass. And this pass is the exact same pass we started with. It's the same pass over your head, but now it's coming hand to hand. And I want you to start to walk small steps Pull your stomach up, abs tight. Start to walk faster and faster. Move in and move back. So you're attacking forward and you're attacking while you're retreating. You're fighting in the other direction, right? You're going forward, you're going back. And then I want you to turn around. And when you turn around, your hands are gonna to continue to spin. And I'm gonna show you from the side. My hands are gonna to continue to spin the staff Nothing stops, but it's now in a reverse spin. Simply by turning your body around, 
you change directions. Now I'm going forward, I turn, and you're in the reverse. Turn, and you're back to forward. Start in, in one place first, just like in this place, just turning, turning, and so far I'm turning to my right shoulder, and that's gonna make me dizzy fast. So I'm gonna go back to my left shoulder, and turn to the left. And challenge yourself, turn to the right. Oh, you just turn right, so now I gotta turn left. Remind yourself, turn right, turn right, go back around the other way. And then, start to move farther, and while you're here, turn around, move back this way, turn around, coming forward, going backward, turning, turning, and you wanna increase your speed, and your flow is gonna go faster simply by turning and then go behind your back. And behind your back as you turn. So you're going back here, turning, and back here. And all I did was go faster. I didn't do anything different. This is the same as turning around, small steps with my feet. One more time. You know how to do this. Now go in front of your body, but turn around ran into my calf. Turn around, it's the exact same thing as you turn around. I wanted to make sure you could see that. Everybody got that, right? Slow, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Means, you're, not, you're moving a little bit faster. Your body's gonna move faster. You're gonna start to spin faster, more speed, more power, pull the stomach tight. But it's about the transition, the pass get smoother and smoother. And it's the smoothness between moves that makes it look faster, that makes it faster. That's how you can be an old get, an old geezer like me, and still move faster than a young guy who's got lots of energy and power, but not as much experience, not as much life, because you've spent so much time improving your transitions You've, you've learned through the years that you have to be patient with yourself. You have to be patient with yourself. Give yourself time to learn and grow. The young guys, you young guys, are blessed with youth. You're blessed with energy, speed, power. You've got all that good testosterone. If you're a boy, even women have good, good uh, chemistry. We'll call it chemistry. Good hormones. And you grow fast and you learn fast. Your muscles get bigger faster. You're more explosive and you lose some of that as you get older. Some of it, not all of it. You lose more if you sit. If you keep your body moving, you'll lose a lot less. But the point is this, you have age and wisdom and understanding of timing and distance. Fluidity and flow, that's what we're looking for. So make yourself go forward, slowly, turn around, slowly, and then gradually a little faster, a little faster. When you're ready, go behind the back, bring it out. Uh, go behind the back, up over the head as you turn, back over the head. Add that in there since we did that today. And then start to really speed it up, but just small, just gradually. And it's about accumulated time, compounding time. It's not just accumulation. It accumulates, but it also compounds. That means you're better tomorrow than you were today. You do this today, you struggle, you struggle, struggle. You go to sleep, your brain changes. All those new neural pathways get uh, kind of like scarred over and they get set like concrete. And then the next time you do it, almost instinctively, your body knows how to do it better. And you start to do that over and over and over. Yes, so get your abs tight, excellent point. All right, before we go, wrist roll, wrist roll, finger roll. So from here, you're going to do the wrist roll. Wrist roll, ask Vic, I've been watching Vic's progress, he sends me the videos. You can send me your videos too, by the way. Either upload them here, upload them to Facebook, 
and then send me a link, info at quantumstrong.com. I would love to give you some feedback if you're interested. And if you want the curriculum, go to pasquinelli.com and look for Bo Staff Curriculum. Click it. It's all listed there for the first couple levels. The new level is coming out this weekend. I've got a big weekend. It's my anniversary. We're going away to the resort on the other side of the state. Gonna go get some seashells. I'm bringing a staff to spin on the beach. Yeah, I'll check it today. Sorry, I was gonna do it yesterday, but we got super busy. All right, so this is all you're doing, right? You start in your hand, you turn your hand down. As it goes down, the first two fingers open. Yeah, we can do combos. Um, are you talking about striking combos or striking and spinning combos, blocking to striking combos? Do you have like a, something in mind or just like a general sense? But this is what you're doing. This, and you can see, this really starts to open. Yeah, I've got, um, I counted the other day, there are 600 videos now, just on the bow staff on my channel. 600. And none of them are the same, but a lot of the moves are the same. But that's the beautiful thing about martial arts, is there's always more to be able to do. There's always more to grow, to level yourself up. Yeah, they kind of sneak up on you like that. Altogether, I've done a, uh, over a thousand videos. Second uh, highest number of videos are on the nunchucks, believe it or not. I didn't realize it was nunchucks. Then the Joe staff. And then the rest are all like, I, I, there's got a ton on um, traditional Taekwondo forms, a ton on um, like just general fitness, fighting fitness, the kind of stuff that I was telling you about, throwing sandbags, Swinging kettlebells, battle ropes. Got all that stuff on there if you just Google it or YouTube it. It's the same thing, right? I had to Google intersectionality today. I still don't understand what the hell that means. Pardon my language. Anyway, not a political statement. All right, good. So, um, yeah, so let's do that. I like to do this. This is a good basic striking combination. Just this idea of a simple punch, punch. Yeah, I'm gonna let you Google it. I'm not gonna try to translate because I'll get it wrong and I, my bias is gonna kick in. Um, it's, it's more along the lines of political correctness. We're drowning in political correctness and the inability to just directly say something to another person. Like, you don't have to like me, but you can't pick on me. That's it, stop. The number one word. Not, it hurts my feelings when you punch me in my face. It's like, stop, don't touch me. I have every right to defend myself. And if you have a stick in your hand, it makes it even better. All right, anyway. Good, keep breaking those sticks. You'll get more. So, like push-up position, right? Punch to the face, punch to the face. Most basic, common. Striking, striking, simple, easy, right? One, two, but notice, and I don't want to break another camera uh, holder, but notice that I'm not going light. I do the first couple, make sure it's right. I want to stop it here on top of the forearm, protect that elbow from getting broken from another stick if I'm fighting. But then I want to go all in, harder. Faster, if you have something to hit, like a bag, stack of tires, a pole, a tree, wrap it first. Practice there. And then, same strike, but down to the knee. Then you can practice moving forward. Strike, step, strike, step, strike, step back, step back. To the knee, to the knee, to the knee. And now you're breaking the sweat again, your muscles are getting stronger, and you're learning how to defend yourself in a very practical way. Then, from here, turning, bringing your left hand to your right shoulder and your right hand to your left stinky armpit, you're gonna block down. Bring it around, right hand to the left shoulder, left hand in your right armpit, and 
block down. Same as a low block, like a karate block, karate, whatever you want to say. Karate block, taekwondo block. From here to here. Down, two. When you bring it down, don't stop it here, but turn your hip, squeeze your abs, clear it. If he's striking your knee here, he you block here. They're trying to hit your knee here. You can block here, you can block here. You can see when I add that spin, it's a lot harder and a lot faster. Then, just like this angle is down, I can bring it up and it's almost like a knife strike right to your jaw. I'm gonna break your jaw with it for self-defense. From here, turn. From here, turn. One, two. It's the exact same motion that you did down, but you're bringing it up and up. Moving back and forth. Start, oh, how could I forget that? High block, low block. Anything coming from here up, especially straight punches. People think a high block is for someone, like a cartoon chopping down on your head. It's for a punch coming to your face. You just push their hand up, exposing their ribs, and then you break them or their face. Same thing's true with this. It's coming straight in, push it up, then strike, right? So you can do this. High block, punch, step, low block, punch. And then add low block, and then you can turn. One side, the other side, and then strike, strike. So there's just uh, some simple things you can do in combination, but I want you to see this, one of my favorites. Wrist roll to wrist roll. Go into figure eight, do a wrist roll to a wrist roll. Figure eight, wrist roll, wrist roll. Figure eight, so you're working on fluidity, you're working on your flow. You can see you have, oh, thank you. That's what intersectionality means, mixture of races and genders. It's a good way to put it, I like that. How about this? Just be nice to people, don't be so judgmental. Don't worry, if you're spending all your time worrying about somebody else and how they live their life, that's a problem. Um, all right, so from here, right? Like is your life so petty that you have to be worrying about somebody else's gender or how they think or what they, now someone comes in and you live and you have some pride in your community and they start tearing it down and burning stuff and breaking stuff and they're really Marxists, most of them are anarchists or whatever, that's something you can speak out against. You can say, that's not right, right? I don't like that, I don't go for that. Get out of my community, stop doing that. Some, someone should send the police in and not just put their knee on their neck but maybe they start rounding them up and every time someone lights a fire on something like a car or a business, maybe that person goes to jail for a long time and they pay their debt to humanity for messing up the community because not all of us agree that we need to destroy everything and start over. And the guys who are saying that, they wanna destroy everything and start over, those guys really are Marxists. They want communism. For some reason, they believe that's gonna help them. And you know what that is? That's somebody who's used to this. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give and we've done it. My generation did it to the millennials. And no offense to millennials, I'm not picking on you. But this idea that everything should come easy and everybody gets a trophy and everybody's a winner. We're all friends here. And the truth is we're not. But we can all be kind and respectful and, and discipline ourselves and not judge and not try to take somebody else's freedom to be who they are and what they are and what they believe in. That's like more of a Christian perspective, right? Or religious. It is not just Christian where you can say live and let live. And we all can learn to love each other without liking each other. Anyway, I don't want to get on that soapbox. All right, we're going like this again. But man, if they come in and they want to tear down my Teddy Roosevelt statue. I grew up, Teddy Roosevelt was one of my heroes. Because he was the rough rider. He rode a horse. That's all I knew about him. He was a rough rider. He was like cowboy president. That's all I knew. Anyway, too much politics makes everything boring. Go back and forth, side to side, add in a couple of wrist rolls, wrist rolls. The wrist rolls are over the back of the hand and the front of the hand. One, two, 
Well, not only that, it's, it's not theirs. That's the point. Um, you pay, if you pay taxes, I pay taxes. I know I pay taxes, a lot of taxes in my lifetime. And a lot of people have paid a lot of taxes, but not everybody pays taxes. And it's not just about that. But a lot of these people who are doing these things just don't have a clue. They don't understand. They've been, um, I mean, if you watch them, what the things that they're saying, it's like, you know, I'm all for being uh, patient. and I don't want to listen. I don't want to hear your point of view. But you're kind of like, uh, you're not very bright. Or you've just been fed a, a load of crap and you bought it. But it's not true. There's a lot of things in this country, in this world, that could be better. But man, have you ever traveled? I've been all over the world. I love to travel. And you come back here and you're like, we got a lot of good stuff going. Get, you know, come on. Yep. What do you think's next? And why did they do that? Because they want to control the thinking of the people. Maybe you just let it be and you, you let people have a, dis, dis, a different opinion of you. But that's what communism does. They want to destroy, they want to make you bad for questioning. I just don't like communists. I got, I got to be honest. I grew up, um, I'm almost 50. I grew up hiding under the table because the Russians were going to bomb us all, the Soviets, with their nuclear bombs. Red Dawn, the first Red Dawn, that uh, spoke to me when I was a kid. Anyway, you're not going to convince me. You're never going to convince me that, that Karl Marx was right and, you know, two, three hundred million people or however many millions that the communism has killed was ever worth it. Because I've seen it. I, I went to East Berlin when it was still all gray and brown. And it was all gray and brown because it all looked the same. That's communism. And they're all atheists and they... Uh, they don't care. They don't care what you believe in. You believe the wrong thing, they'll put you in an, a million Uyghurs. They have a million of their Muslims in China because it, China is communist. And it is, right? A lot of places that are, even though they have been <laughs> making money from our labor. It's our fault, too. I'm not, I'm not trying to be one way or the other. I take full responsibility. But we can start to uh, take it back. All right, wrist rolls. Okay, so you got your wrist roll, to the wrist roll, we did the finger roll before, throw a finger roll in or two, go back in here, wrist roll, the finger roll, back and forth, but then I want you to finish with this motion here, because I want you guys getting super, super strong. Yeah, well that's what happens, you... Um, if you create something, if you're somebody who like invents something, comes up with an idea, you teach something like martial arts, you uh, get some wood, make it straight, paint it black, sell it on the internet, you're a creator. If you just steal what everybody else created, you have to be a dictator, you have to be a totalitarian. And that's what the uh, Communist People's Party is. They don't make anything, they just steal stuff. I'll probably get banned now because um, I'll get ex or canceled. I was going to say exited. I'll get canceled now because God forbid that our American uh, digital media companies stand up for freedom and democracy. Have you seen this, uh, the Facebook ad canceling? I think that's pretty funny. All these companies like REI. By the way, you get rid of these, these companies, YouTube, uh, Google, Facebook, Twitter. The Chinese have the same version, and the Communist People's Party controls those. And if we destroy our Facebook and Twitter and all that other stuff for silly political reasons, and we don't learn how to make them better, then who do you think's waiting in the wings? And then if we're co communicating this way over a Chinese Communist Party-controlled product, everything's going into uh, the premieres or whatever he is. President G, he's going into his earpiece. He's hearing, he's hearing my voice. What's that guy in, in uh, South Florida saying? What did he say about me? Go get him. Anyway, that's, I'm just only half joking. Anyway, all these, all these companies are boycotting Facebook in the month of July when none of them advertise and none of them sell anything on it. It's a little disingenuous. This whole time right now seems overly political. Yes, anyway, let's, let's get off of politics. That doesn't help anything. All right, palm up, palm down. You're pushing over the top 
of one hand and you're stopping with the other. This is my right hand. I'm going to push the right hand down and allow it to wrist roll, stop it with the left, wrist roll, stop with the right. And you can, there it goes again. I think I'm just determined to break everything today. All right. You can keep your hands off. That's what I was trying to show you. And you just saw what the consequence is. You're going to lose your stats. Or you can train to keep your hands closer, right? Because if you are starting to fight, and what this does, so this, so we did palms facing the strikes here, right? That, this is more of the Chinese style, the Kung Fu style. We'll call it the Indian style, just to be a little cantankerous, because a lot of the martial arts, everybody says, started in China, didn't start in India. Started with the Indians. Salam Bam. This is a good representation. Indian martial arts, Kirapati, the Salam Bam, they use the stick, and that's where a lot of us got it from. But like the Japanese style has this split grip. Strike, strike, strike. These are all strikes, all strikes. And then these turns, twisting motions, and that's to get somebody, they're holding onto your staff, that's gonna flip them and twist them. It's a beautiful thing, we're gonna get into that. That's level three, Vic. But I want you to go here to here so that you can change your grip. This is grip changing. This is kind of rolling the staff. This is right. You should practice this when you have time. But I also want you to do it with a spin. And when you do it with a spin, keep your hands close. I like to slide them. I like to know that they're there. So I'm not going to lose my staff. And then when you can do it, keeping your elbows down a little bit. And I lift my elbows a lot because I'm teaching to the camera. And I got to get them up here. But ideally, you can do most of it here. Keep your elbows tucked into your body. All right, that's all I got for today. Like I said, the next video I do, it's going to be without a weapon, hand-to-hand -hand combat, getting back into some of that. But I want to show you some exercises you can do to build wicked power, strength, speed, power, explosiveness, so that when you fight to defend yourself, you can really hit as hard as you possibly can. Look for that one.